Hi, my name is Andy Casper. I'm a consultant with Premier Computing. Thanks for watching this brief video on how to deploy the SRS reports for Microsoft Dynamics GP. So first I'd like to discuss some reasons why you might deploy these reports. First of all, the reports that you're deploying into SRS are available in Microsoft Dynamics GP. However, this system allows you to push those reports outside of the GP system and make them available to non-GP users. So this means that those non-GP users get live data that's refreshable on demand. That this information can be loaded in an iframe of maybe a uh, company intranet or website if you want to push that data out, or certain reports out. It does not require an additional GP license for anyone who wishes to view these reports. And best of all, this deployment feature as well as SQL reporting services are all included when you make a purchase with GP and have SQL Server. So let's get started. Now, if you haven't already done so, there's a couple of different ways you can install SQL reporting services. Native mode creates its own web server, its own web pages, and has its own separate security model independent of anything going on in GP. Now that's also true for the SharePoint mode, but what you get in SharePoint mode is the ability to utilize maybe an existing SharePoint intranet and all the security that you've already set up there. Or if you haven't set up SharePoint and you're starting from scratch, this is a great way to introduce your users to SharePoint and provide some immediate content on the deployment. Now for this demonstration, I'll be using the SQL native mode just to simplify the process or, or shorten this video. However, we do offer a SQL reporting services class that will cover the various modes in which you can deploy SRS and go over the security settings and other deployments inside of both the native and the SharePoint side. Okay, now that SRS is installed, the next thing we need to do is grab a couple of URLs that will be stored in the report configuration manager. These URLs will be used to deploy the reports inside of GP. So opening up SQL Services Configuration Manager, the Reporting Services Configuration Manager, we can find these URLs in two places. We've got the Web Service URL, which is the Web Server URL, and the Report Manager URL. Now the Report Manager URL is utilized for users to actually reach these reports. And so you can deploy that out directly to your users and provide security, and they can get right to that web page and browse those reports, or you can use the links you find inside a report manager to build iframes inside of another intranet or another web page that you might have set up. Okay, so now there's another change we need to make to the configuration files, um, specifically the web.config file for the SRS deployment. Now, SRS has a default maximum size of four megabytes for a report and some of the reports that we'll be pushing from GP into SRS exceed that size. And so you'll get a failure on deployment unless you make this change first. Okay, so to edit this file, all we're going to do is open up Explorer and browse to the C drive or wherever you have SQL installed, Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server, and then note the folder that actually says MS SRS. Open that folder open reporting services, report server, and down at the bottom of this screen you'll see the web.config file. So I like to open this with notepad, so I'll right click on it, choose open with, and select notepad to open this file. Now the line we need to edit, you'll find execution timeout 9000. So scroll down until you see that. Here it is execution timeout 9000. So we're going to add a little bit of text to the end here. I'm going to add a space. And I'll paste in this string of text. Max request length 20960. So your line should look just like that. Okay, so let's save this file. And the last step now is to restart the reporting services so that it will check for that change. So for that, I'm gonna go back into SQL, reporting server configuration manager, 
and just click stop and then start and wait for that to restart okay now we're ready to deploy those reports so we'll click on the Microsoft Dynamics GP menu go to tools setup system and towards the bottom you'll see report or reporting tools setup so click that from here, we'll select the report server mode for native because that's what I selected when I installed reporting services. I also have the option for SharePoint integrated here if that's where I'm going. And here's where our two URLs come into play. So again, we can get these URLs from reporting services manager. So I'm gonna head there now. And this is also a good time to test those URLs in advance to make sure that everything on reporting services is working the way we expect it to. So I'll start with the web service URL and click on the link or address that's provided there. When I do, I should just see a simple response indicating that the report server is running. Perfect, this is exactly what I wanna see, no error. So I'll copy this URL, head back over to GP, and paste it in to my report server URL. Next, I need my report manager URL. So I'll click on this again just to test. There it is, perfect, looks just right. Now for this URL, I need to leave off the pages and the folders at the end. So I'm just grabbing the server name slash reports. And I'll paste that into GP as well. Okay, so I know those URLs both work and are correct. Now, for the subfolder, I can really name this anything I want. It's going to default to my GP instance. And in this case, I'm going to change that to Dynamics GP. I'll check the box to re redeploy all the reports, even though we've never deployed any of them. I want it to make sure it deploys all of them and click Deploy Reports. And when I do this, it's going to ask me to save the configuration settings that I just made. So I'll have to click this button twice. So I'll answer yes to save these changes. And then I need to click deploy reports again to actually start the deployment process of those reports. And here we'll see our progress window come up and in the top section where it's SQL reporting services deployment, we'll see this progress get started. Okay, with those reports deployed, now let's go test them and see what it looks like in SRS. So I'm gonna hit okay here. I can close my reporting services configuration manager and even GP. And from here, I'll just go to start. I'll paste in my report server manager URL and that's just server name slash reports by default unless you've changed it. And there's my subfolder. And if I look at my company name, there's my reports. So here are all my GP reports deployed and accessible. I can browse into these folders, run these reports, and deploy them out to my users now in any number of ways. So as I mentioned, we could send our users directly to Reporting Manager here, and uh, we can set up security inside of Reporting Manager and give uh, Active Directory users specific rights to folders and to, to specific reports. Um, we could uh, take these report URLs once we've opened a report and put that in an iframe in a website Website if we've got a, a pre-built um, internet. Or we can even deploy these using uh, Report Manager in SharePoint using a similar method with an iframe or a, a web part viewer, uh, web page viewer web part and show these reports inside of SharePoint if we'd like. So that's SQL reporting services with Microsoft Dynamics GP. Of course, we can intermingle our own reports, our own custom reports uh, with these reports. If these don't quite suit your needs and you need something maybe a little more specific to your business, a little more tailored, uh, Premier Computing has staff on hand that can help you in learning to code these reports yourself. Of course, we'd be happy to do them for you once we get to know your business and its needs. And uh, we'd really like to help you deploy a robust reporting system 
to give you the business data that you need. So thanks again for joining me on this video. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm acasper at premiercomputing.com or uh, give us a call anytime, 1-800-458-2948.